I keep coming across these people who've built like 40, 50, 100 million dollar businesses and I'm trying to understand why I haven't done that. I want to start seeing 100 million and mm -hmm. I honestly just don't see it a lot. You don't see 100 million? What? I think for us specifically, we missed a couple of opportunities. I went on to consulting.com which used to be Sam Ovens' website. And Sam Ovens was someone who coached me through the course space and, and the development of me becoming a higher ticket coach. I said, let me go and take a look at what Sam's got going on these days, right? Hadn't checked him out in a couple of years and I went to his site and he sold his company. I think they're willing to take a bigger risk too. What are you willing to risk that scares the crap out of you? Are you ready, Donnie? I'm always ready. As I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Let's go. Welcome Let's to another this, edition son. of the Social Proof Podcast. Number one entrepreneurship podcast in the whole entire world. In my world, in your world, and for sure in your world. That's a fact, man. Mm. I am excited about what's going on in the world. It's okay. Take your time. Because we shaking the room, Bray. Did, did she do that? A little bit. Yeah, what's going good. on today? Let's go. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, Wiggins, how do you feel? I feel amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I feel amazing. There was like this little bug that was going around over the weekend. I don't know what day of the week it is right now, but there was a bug going around some days ago. I had it down for two whole days. Mm -hmm. I feel fan freaking tastic today. Good. Everybody's catching that thing, man. Everybody. Yeah. It's like it's like COVID twenty. You know what I mean? It's something. It's something. It's not the flu. It's not strep throat. It was something really weird. Yeah. Uh, but for two days I was completely like, don't talk to me, don't look at me. I just wanted to lay. Yeah. And uh but and then it was just like immediately gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're all catching it, man. Uh, Everybody's he, catching it. Got me scared to be around people. Oh, bro. Stay away. Uh, I'm scared to go outside. Mm -hmm. Anything interesting happen this week? Uh, let's see. I There's always some interesting things that are happening, for sure. Yeah. My most exciting thing, I did a photo shoot with Milan for the Milano mm -hmm. de Rouge line. Mm -hmm. We did a Galentine's photo shoot. What's that? Uh girls valentines like a gal like my gal pal valentines shoot you never heard mm -hmm. of it what galentines it's a thing it's like your home girls are your oh i see yeah and i don't know if it's it's not a i don't think it's a single woman's thing i think it's like you know how you do friendsgiving mm. we girls do galentines oh, okay Anyway, it was fun and it was exciting. And I got to see how... I'm sorry, what exactly is the Galentine? It's like you just get together. Well, that would have to be a singles thing, right? No, because it doesn't have to be... It's like Friendsgiving is before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So it's like you do your gift exchange for Christmas before Christmas with your friends. So Galentine is like... But the people like, who don't really have like family or like their family like that start the Friendsgiving thing? I have no idea who started it. What are you trying to get at? I'm not trying to get at anything. I'm trying to get to an understanding. Why do I always have to be getting at something? Well, because you have on your I'm getting to something look on your face. That's the posture. <laughs> I do be getting that stuff. You, you are getting okay, at it. Okay, go ahead. So, Galentine, it's, a, it's an event. It's, a, it's an event? It's not an event. It can be. You can do a Galentine's brunch, Galentine's dinner. We had a Galentine's photo shoot. Gotcha. And so, what I was getting at was... Um, I personally believe that in the space of luxury design, luxury clothing designs, like when you're thinking about the Gucci and the Louis Vuittons and um, I don't know anybody, Fendi, whoever does clothes, I think Milano de Rouge is going to be the black designer company that stands and occupies, stands in and occupies that occupies that space. And it was just really dope to be in her warehouse doing this photo shoot. Um, and seeing the level of excellence, like literally the looks being scheduled to the minute mm -hmm. and just the planning that went into it. That was my first time being a part of anything like that. And it was fun. That's dope. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. What exciting happened for you? Exciting. Uh, we just getting stuff done. 
a very productive week so far. And I'm happy, man, I keep, I keep coming across these people who've built like 40, 50, a hundred million dollar businesses. And I just keep coming across these people who are doing really, really big things. And I'm just trying to understand why I haven't done that. You know what I mean? Cause you look at the people and you're like, you did it. Like you're not mm -hmm. smarter than me. You're not more talented. You don't have more of a work ethic. And I'm starting to realize that it's something that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I just, I just know you have a different piece of information mm -hmm. or maybe, so I have this conversation. I went to, um, I went to uh, have a meeting with Ryan at the gathering spot and I'm having a conversation with him, and I'm like outlining something that I see that could really, um, really be big. So I mentioned something and I'm like, oh, this could be cool. Like we can make, this could be a couple million dollar operation here. And he was sitting there and he was looking at it and he's like, yeah, I'm for sure seeing how it could be an immediate benefit, but I also see 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 50 million, and 100. He said, I'm looking at what you drew out and my mind automatically thinks in these phases, these stages of 10 million, 50 million, 100 million, and how what I'm saying can turn into that. And I'm like, wow, this is incredible that we are looking at the same thing, but you have um, a different piece of information and you just see a bigger <clears> game. <throat> and I think I've just, I've just been thinking too small lately, man. Not lately, but just my whole life. The people who build big stuff see a big game. They just, they just see it bigger. So I don't know, man. And it's, it's starting to frustrate me because I want to start seeing a hundred million. And mm -hmm. I honestly just don't see it a lot. You don't see a hundred million. I see it. I, okay. I can say it and I can think about it, but I don't see all the things that need to be done to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, a key difference between companies that generate, let's say a million dollars in revenue mm -hmm. and a hundred million dollars in revenue. I think for us specifically, we missed a couple of opportunities. There was a time period between um, maybe 2017 to 2021 where if you had the capital to take advantage of paid marketing on social media, you could very well For be sure. one of these $100 million companies. For sure. And I've never been able to run ads. You've never really gone super in on ads. You've always had a little bit of apprehension about really going hard on ads until much later in the game. And by the time we came around to it, it was like been there, done that. And now you get what's left. Yeah. So I think in this age, in this day and age with the type of business models, if we're looking apples to apples, um, I think we missed a huge mark with the paid traffic and we're still missing the mark with paid traffic. Like we're relying a lot on our own talent and ability to build the brand and you really got to get out there and diversify. But also speaking of diversification, I think the difference between the one million dollar brand and the one hundred million dollar brand is that the one hundred million dollar brands generally have a much broader reach Whereas the $1 million brand usually has a very niche specific uh, reach. And if you think about what we do, it's very, very niche specific. Um, so for example, the $100 million brand would be the university for entrepreneurs in all industries, all niches, teaching all areas of entrepreneurship. $100 million, easily put paid marketing behind it, get government sponsorship, blah, blah, blah. We're in the space of developing coaches and consultants, podcasters. It's very, very niche specific. And we're betting it all on our audience of people all wanting to do a very similar thing. So that's a clear, clear difference. Um, and then also, um, you know, just being behind the mark when it comes to access to capital. Um, 
we don't necessarily we typically don't get access to capital the same way as some of our peers in the industry. Mm -hmm. And then by the time we do get access to capital, we've had we've been in this game so long. Um, we've had to prove ourselves a much different way to get it. We all know what redlining is in the banking industry and how that works. So we, we have a couple of things that one works against us, but then two, we just didn't take advantage of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right. And I think during that time, we were looking at things wrong because so it wasn't that I, I had apprehension about ads. It's just I wasn't thinking that this is how you build something. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of the stuff that we do is very organic. On another side of the tracks, when they do the same thing, like we do a challenge, we're going to promote it to our audience and mm -hmm. we're going to send out emails and we're going to like promote it on our platforms, things of that nature. And on the other side, they just dump a bunch of money into it. They yeah. dump a bunch of money into the reach. So really, when I talk to them, they're like, yo, how'd you do that organically? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. That's just what we do. How did you do that? Yeah, how you do that? You put how much in the ads, you got that much back, and you know you're going to do it like clockwork every single time yeah. because there's not even a there's not even a, a, a connection necessarily between the people that's buying and you. But we look at it as I want to connect with my customer. And I don't think it's bad or, you know, I don't think it's a right or wrong. It's just the perspective. So I was, I, I was talking to my D yesterday, again, about um, another... And I said this to Ryan another day too. I said, we are very different. Even though there are different parts, because he was talking about, yo, know, I'm in this room where, you know, like we're, you know, politicians and we're talking about like change like overall, right? Mm -hmm. But then I'm all I'm, I'm I'm with the rappers and I'm I'm he said I'm in every single room and I get to see the different corners. And he said, they're very different. The people are very different in the way they think. And I was telling Ryan, I'm like, yo, I'm very different than you too. Because if I think about a million dollars, I need to go get a million dollars. Me and Donnie sit down, come up with a product or service, and we go get this million. We're going to make this million dollars. But I'm like, yo, when you look at you need a million dollars for a business, your first thought is, I'm just going to raise it. Mm -hmm. the, the very first thought it's not like let's come up with a cool program the first and again I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing it it's just different so people are looking at things from a different perspective I think it's our job to try to get a bunch of different ways to look at something and then create our own gumbo because we want our community involved mm -hmm. but also we need to figure out how to not be so um, coddling of our ideas <clears throat> and get other people involved and just go get other money. There's a lot of things you can do with $500. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes. Well, really nice shoes are about double $500. Um, you could buy a course or you can learn something for $500. But I have something better for you to do with the $500. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday for the rest of the year. I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, a successful community, and a successful life all the way around. But I want to share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one-on-one -on -one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I want to meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. Every single month we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month and every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic and I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot.
Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the big part. I mean, you said there's no right or wrong way to do it. And that's that's right. We're not complaining about what we've generated. For sure. Um, but I do think now in, in having this conversation, there's a million dollar way and there's a one hundred million dollar way. Facts. Not right or wrong, but vastly different. Um, and one of those things I know is it specifically relates to us is we're always putting our own money up. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't even try. We both have excellent credit. And we <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and we right. don't even try right. to go out. And we haven't even applied for money. Like yeah. for our building, we haven't even applied to yeah. see what's out there. Uh, because when we even think of the idea like, oh, let's go apply. Then it's like, what's that interest rate? Meanwhile, companies that are scaling hundreds of millions of dollars, they're not concerned about the interest rate yeah. because they understand the rate of return Facts. and how they're going to pay that money back before the interest rate really matters significantly. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we're almost a year later yeah. and we're still raising money. <laughs> For sure. It's just we don't we don't know. You know what I mean? And again, what we like me and Donnie will get excited about a million dollar play like, yo, we could do this. That mm-hmm. eighty something thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. it's up. Mm-hmm. And if we are going to get to that next level, and and I'm talking like me personally, I have to stop getting excited about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's an extra million dollar business going to do? Not much. You know what I mean? But we're still chasing our idea of a win. Mm-hmm. But there are people where their win is, I'm going to build this business. We're going to grow it, get the infrastructure together in 12 months, 24 months, three years. We're going to sell it for 30 million. And that's the that's the plan from the beginning mm-hmm. versus, yo, know, we can just make some good money right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fully agree. And as I'm thinking about um, like the hundred million dollar conversations I've been a part of with companies that have actually achieved this thing. A couple of differences. Uh, we probably should have numbered these out. Do you mm. remember what we've said? Mm-mm. <laughs> I'm just speaking from my heart. We're speaking from <laughs> our heart. Um, a, another difference is companies, two, I have two. One, they partner up. Mm. We partner mm. sideline. Yeah. So um, I went on to um, consulting.com which used to be Sam Ovens' website. And Sam Ovens was someone who coached me through the course space and and the development of me becoming a higher ticket coach. He was like the first person that I came across that, that, that I was introduced to that really showed me how to do that. And so the other day I said, let me go and take a look at what Sam's got going on these mm-hmm. days, right? Hadn't checked him out in a couple of years. And I went to his site and... He sold his company. Sold his company. And who is Sam Ovens? Sam Ovens is um, a consultant. He owns a company called, or he did own a company called Consulting.com, mm-hmm. where he had an accelerator program that taught you how to become a seven figure coach, consultant, course creator. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, this, white guy who is just really, he has this charismatic way of generating tens and tens and now hundreds of millions of dollars. He's now created this um, university platform called School, Mm -hmm. S-K-O-O-L. And it's like, the reason that I even thought of him again, because I was in another room and somebody was like, oh, you should put your platform on school. And I was like, wow, that's really taking off. Cynthia just told me about that too. Mm-hmm. Yesterday morning or this morning. Went over. Yeah, I'm like, wow, that's really taking off. So I went to go look at um, consulting and seeing like, how is he doing both? Well, he sold it. And so there's a video on there from the new owner who was his student who went on to make like eight figures or whatever. And he came and he said, hey, I see you're really focused on this school thing. Let me buy consulting.com. And he made him an offer. And he said, Sam called him back a couple of days later and was like, yeah, why not? Like, do it. Um, But he went big, heavy, like the first time around. And now just listening to the journey, they've partnered on other projects. And I'm like, he partnered up. He was a student. He came in. He saw where he could take this on, still maintain it at the highest level of 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 excellence, the standard of excellence that Sam put in place. And now they're partnered in doing other big business deals. So I think finding 
how we can add value Mm -hmm. to upwardly to someone who's doing things at a larger scale. And then one of the biggest, biggest differences, $100 million companies hire top tier talent. Mm -hmm. So we have a, we have heartstrings connected to developing talent. They have strategic plans to hire the best talent. Mm Mm-hmm. And there is a huge difference. A hu- when, when we're focused on spending our time on training and developing from scratch because our heart is attached to doing it and we want to bring our people up, we have to understand that that comes with some bottlenecks. Yeah. And it's also going to come with some lumps in the drain that's going to slow the process down. So talent is also going to be another really huge piece. And they yeah. invest top dollar like they have headhunters and recruiters and they're sending them off to the you know these are people like I see conversations in rooms where like fashion brands are saying oh I'm not looking for the intern that's coming out of SCAD I want to take the person who was working at Calvin Klein yeah and that's that's what's happening it was so cool this was maybe a couple weeks ago maybe two weeks ago Kay actually uh says like yo we know we need to have a meeting and we're sitting down and she proposed like uh, a bunch of stuff that can help the whole organization. And it really made me smile, Kay. Go, Kay. Because it wasn't, it wasn't, I ask you to do this and you do that. There was like some thought attached to it. And we were sitting there like trying to figure out like how, you know, what, she can do to like add even more value without me saying you need to add more value, which is, we were actually talking about the other day, me and Donnie, the assistant from uh, the Devil Wears Prada, Mm -hmm. seen that movie? She can demand what she wants. Top dollar. Because it's not reactionary. Hey, I need you to do this and you do it. And you try to do the thing as best as you can. But one, being able to think this is going to need to be done before somebody asks me, but also thinking innovatively. And that's, I think if the harder you are to replace, um, the more you can demand, Mm -hmm. but you become so invaluable because it's very hard to find people that are thinking. You know what I mean? Like you find somebody good at what they do because you're like, yo, write this email and they write the email or edit this video and they edit the video mm-hmm. or go make sales and they have their script and they're going to like bang out the script. And that's valuable because they're going to call the people and they're going to do their job. But when you have someone that's thinking innovatively, those are the people that you want to partner with. Yeah. So hire. those are the people that you want to hire mm-hmm. for sure. And when they come back and say, yo, I need more money. It's more of a serious conversation because the person's adding value to the organization, not just, not just doing what's required because you can find anybody to do what's required. Mm -hmm. Even as an entrepreneur, like we need to be thinking innovatively, not just providing what our customer needs, but how can we provide a system like McDonald's provided a system with the customer in mind? There were a bunch of restaurants that were providing hamburgers and fries and food. You walk up, you, you get your order, they give you the food. McDonald's says, yo, how can we get people in and out quickly? Somebody thought about that. Somebody had like forethought and that's why they become who they become. And the Steve Jobs of the world and the Donnie Wiggins and all these people who are forward thinking to solve a problem. Mm-hmm. And I think we don't, we just don't, we're not thinking big enough. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anything's wrong with what we're doing because there's also a lower tier of person who's not even thinking million dollar business. They're still stuck on, yo, how how can I get this product out? And the win is launching it to say I have a business. Yeah. Then a step above that is, okay, let me make six figures. Can I make $8,000 a month or $10,000 a month and you do it and you start bragging to your friends? But you and I aren't looking at, oh, this is a success, $10,000, let's do it. We're thinking million. Mm-hmm. But there's always these stages, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I, was, I was sitting here recapping what we've talked about because I think this is a really 
um, important conversation and we can really stay in this lane. So we have seven things that we've given so far. So the difference between the $1 million company and the $100 million company, I just want to recap them real quick. Um, Number one, one million dollar companies tend to leverage a lot of organic traffic, whereas one hundred million dollar companies tend to leverage uh, marketing, paid marketing with high budgets. Like they're not spending a thousand dollars on ads; they're spending a hundred thousand dollars this week, yeah, <laughs> this sure. month, maybe even. Um, number two, very niche specific versus a broader niche, right? Um, Number three, using your own money versus leveraging other people's money. Number four, partnering sideline, meaning with people who are at the level that you're at, know what you know, versus partnering up people who are above you. They know more than you. They have more resources than you. Um, Number five, developing talent, hiring a whole bunch of people that you like and you're putting in position versus recruiting talent going out and finding people who are already experienced and or experts in their particular right. lane. Um, number six, uh, number six, doing tasks versus solving big problems, yeah. right? Are you, do you have, a, are you as an entrepreneur and your team just doing a whole bunch of things that's on the to-do list in your project management software? Like these are the things we do today or are you guys having innovative conversations and solving big problems? Are you contributing to solve a big problem? Um, And then number seven, you were kind of leaning on it, but we can even go deeper. Um, Highly duplicatable processes. For sure. Like does your business, is your business in a lane where it can be duplicated in Atlanta or in Germany? McDonald's was the concept that you were using. The burgers are the burgers, whether you're in Spain or whether you are in Alabama, the burgers are the burgers. Obviously, you know, there's a little bit of a difference because somebody's going to say that there are rules and regulations on meat that they use. But the McDonald's process is the McDonald's process, regardless of where you go. The Chick-fil-A process is the Chick-fil-A process, regardless of where you go. And so, what is duplicatable, highly duplicatable at a very, very high level. So when we're thinking about like videographers and photographers who have gone out and made million dollar businesses, what's the difference between them and say Kodak, who is out of business now, but at one time they were the height of their game. They went out of business for, which can Kodak be number eight. Business? No, they're not out, but they're not they're not, they're not who, who they were. They used to be for sure. And they definitely had to have a revamp like the, the Kodak um, historic office that was here in Atlanta. That's done. That's like I don't even think it has windows. It's completely boarded up and they've gone into other spaces. But Kodak yeah. suffered significantly because they refused to innovate. They still wanted to put pictures, film and cameras and print pictures out. Yeah, that's crazy. When you Google Kodak, Kodak camera is like the sixth or seventh one down. And the you know the first first suggestion is hmm. you Google Kodak? Kodak Black. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yo, yeah. that is crazy. <laughs> Kodak Black is way more famous and recognizable than Kodak the camera company. Goodness gracious. I'm sorry, go ahead. That was I, that was interesting. No, but um that could lead us to number eight. So do you have um Number seven, highly duplicatable processes are in $100 million companies. Yeah. What is it for million dollar companies? I don't want to say just not highly duplicatable processes. I mean, yeah, high, not highly duplicatable. <laughs> so I, 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 was, something I was at the gym and I was talking to Derek uh, with, uh, with uh, Big Dave's Cheesesteak. And he was talking about, you know, you know how he just opens these businesses. I think he had like six or seven of them. And then somebody... And he announced it already, but somebody came and bought 10 franchises. From Big Dave? From Big Dave. Whew. And in my mind, I, and this is, this is me, okay? This, you guys are seeing my shortcomings. In my head, I'm like, how do you prevent people from stealing or making it wrong and things of that nature? And obviously, we know the answer is you create a system, but... It's so much easier saying it than doing it. So if, if we're gonna build 10 more of these, mm-hmm. 
I think we have a somewhat, somewhat of a system, but in my brain, it's like, if I'm not there, how do I make sure it gets done right? Right. This is just a, this is a me thing. And this is probably why I haven't built a hundred million dollar company. Right. But we, we know that something takes a system or required requires a system, but to actually implement it mm -hmm. is an extremely, extremely valuable skill set. Yeah, for like sure. How do we like it's, it's, and you could probably go into somebody else's company and put a system together because you're smart like that. And it's even more difficult doing it in your own business. It's so is, much more difficult to do it in your own business. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so difficult to do it in your own business. Um, I was talking to another business coach over the weekend and um, helping her in an issue in her business. And I don't want to give too much detail about it because it was just a, a private conversation, but helping her solve an issue in her business that is like, but you do what I do. Mm. And we are sideline, meaning we have the same level of success. And, you know, and here I am helping you. And it was such a wow moment for her. Like, Oh my God, thank you so much for that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing, and so it, it can almost feel hypocritical because there are things that she could have helped me with that I get the yeah. same aha moment from. There are things that I teach my clients or implement with my clients based on the experience of having done it with so many people at this point or so many businesses at this point mm -hmm. that I don't do for myself. Yeah. And the difference is it goes back to these seven or eight things that we've talked about already. Our unwillingness to... Um, our, our commitment to develop talent versus recruit talent. Mm -hmm. Like the reason that you're afraid to walk away from certain things or the reason why you question, is this going to work the way I need it to work is because you're not recruiting talent who's already experienced in doing that. Imagine having the ability, imagine us saying, we're going to go and open 10 more podcast suites, but we got to be at all of them. We can hire literally the way we hire right now, which I think is valuable. I think mm -hmm. this is needed too. Or we can go and get a bunch of Ryans from the gathering spot mm -hmm. and put them in place. Yeah. Which one's going to go up faster? Fact. Absolutely. And I, another point is I think just how it takes nothing for us to get started. Nothing. Like to start something. But growing it and systematizing it is a, uh, it takes a little more challenge, but just as easy as it is for us to come up with an idea and start something, I'm realizing that there are some people who put systems in place, it's just that easy mm -hmm. for them to look at something and say, yo, oh, this is, this needs to move here. This is, needs to be the SOP. This needs, this is the person that mm -hmm. needs to be in this position. But the person who can like run it, mm -hmm. For them to actually start a business, it would take forever. It would take They'll forever. They'll never do it because mm -hmm. their brain doesn't function that way. So we need to find people that are just as amazing and efficient and effective as we are just in those particular positions. But I mean, you know, like you gotta, you gotta, they demand pay. Mm -hmm. you gotta pay somebody that like operates at that level of excellent, excellence. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to pay people who don't operate at that level of excellence as much. So we'd be like, all right, well, we'll just do what we have to do because it's very less risky. I think on that list, I think they're willing to take a bigger risk too. Definitely willing to take small risks versus big risks. Mm -hmm. You're willing, like right now, you're probably like investing your paycheck or you're reinvesting your revenue mm -hmm. that you're generating from your from your business and in the grand scheme of the world of business and entrepreneurship, that's a very small risk. What are you willing to risk that scares the crap out of you? Yeah. Small risks versus big risks. And honestly, usually if you're risking something that you possess and can hold in your hand, it's a small risk. Yeah. Yep. Or you can do it without much consequence. You can do it without much consequence. Mm -hmm. You can recoup it. Yep, I invested ten thousand dollars, lost it, but I know I'll make that back next week. It hurt next but month. 
I'll get it back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, oh, man, this is crazy. I just thought about this, too. And maybe one of the things that's keeping us small, and maybe it's just, it's just me because you don't have this problem, but I think it's if, if we're going to go get some people's money, mm -hmm. we have to make good on the promise. And we will try tirelessly, if we're going to raise capital, Mm -hmm. to make sure that we make good on what we say we're going to give back. For sure. But that is risky for me because now I'm at risk of, okay, for some reason you thought you were going to get your money back in the first six months, but it don't really work like that. Or let's say something happens with this idea and it doesn't work out. And now I, it could like ruin my entire character. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's one of the things that maybe subconsciously, I don't think like forefront of my mind, I'm thinking like that, but subconsciously, because I know I have that, that issue, maybe that's why I just, I'm not involving nobody. I'm going to do what I do because if it don't work, I can let me down and I'm okay with that. But other people, it's a little more challenging for me. So I don't know. Yeah. That's risky for me. That that's, that's a risk for sure. For um, me. For you. Yeah. I think it's a risk for a lot of people. I think um, I think a lot of people, a lot of business owners don't make certain decisions because they're afraid of the what ifs. Mm -hmm. What if it doesn't work out? Yeah. What if it doesn't go as planned? What if, what if, what if? How do I make good on this? And I think that's a great place to be in. But how do the $100 million brands think differently? Um, I believe they are also concerned about reputation. Many of them. I don't think every brand that's done it on a big scale could care less about reputation and making good on promises. Um, but I think that um, maybe they approach it differently with a different level of confidence. Like it, it just doesn't always work out. And I yeah. think that's a place to understand. Like it's just not always going to work out, but they're also choosing their customer differently too, or their partner differently or whoever that is. Mm -hmm. And being very clear, like usually when you're risking at a super, super high level and you're worried about reputation and is this going to come back and will you be able to make good? Usually the people that you're engaging in this business with, they're also willing to risk at a super high level. Yeah. So it's not the same level of damage to a reputation. And that brings us to, you know, another point, like choosing your audience has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um, choosing an audience of, a ho uh, of hopers, dreamers and hopers, people full of dreams and hopes that, they're literally risking their last dollar. They're choosing between mortgage and mentorship and, you know, all this stuff. That's a really risky pool to play in yeah. versus choosing an audience of people that have stuff to lose. Like yeah. uh, they, they have it to lose it. Uh, sure, they'll say, ouch, but it won't be a detriment. It won't be the yeah. end of them. And that makes a difference, too. Let me tell you another risk of going a hundred million dollar big Typically, you have to let go of the million. Uh, you've got to let go of the one of the things that is the good idea that pay you good because you can't go after both. You know what I mean? So, like, if we are going to go big, it takes time, energy, attention, money, and you don't have the time to go make those $3,000 plays and $2,000 plays anymore and a few hundred dollar plays because you're going bigger. And do you want to let go of what you know to go after this unknown? It's, it's risky. We did it. A hundred percent. But we, we haven't done it yet. We've <clears throat> no, done no, it. No, no, we did it. We did. We had to do it to make the million. Yes. When we, we had this, this part, this conversation, we had this same dilemma. Like, in order to make the million, we got to let the six figures go. A hundred percent. And it was hard. It was like, do I do it? Will we be okay? Am I letting people down? Yeah. You know, by, by doing this, but it worked out. Yeah. Um, but imagine mm -hmm. you're going a hundred million. Mm-hmm. No more VIP days, Dottie. No more VIP no days. I love them so much. I mean, I'm like I on, love them so much. in the group. Like we're doing a free joint the uh, next week. We have a free business execution workshop next week. No, you can't do things people, like 60 that. 60 people there. Mm -hmm. But if we're going 100 million, 
You cannot. We have one hundred thousand dollar workshops. Oh, <laughs> Would we all. have workshops at all? Like, do you have the ability to be in rooms like that and that tangible? Like right now, you risk so many things. Like, can you still be as accessible at one hundred million dollars as you are at one million dollars? And we still enjoy some component of the accessibility that we have. Right. Yeah. Um, you a whole lot more than me. <clears throat> Uh, David just be walking through and he wants to, he wants to I'm be here, pull up. everybody. And <laughs> I didn't realize how accessible I still am, even though I have boundaries in place until we were at invest fest last year and I was starving. I was sick at that time. I'm barely pushing through. And my, my cousin Candace, shout out to Candace um, was assisting me that day. And I'm just stopping and being pulled in a million directions. And I remember it taking, Kay, you were there. Remember I was sick that day. It took like an hour for us to get through the crowd to try to get food. And I still came back with no food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kay, and I think it was J star had to literally stand. They're like, you're done. There's no more. Hello. There's no more. Like you're done. And I sat at that table and I like put my head on a box under the table just to get a minute to recoup, but in that moment, you just want to be, you don't want to let people down. Like, you know that people invested money to be at an invest fest and they did it because they saw all their favorite entrepreneurs on the flyer and they saw their favorite podcasters and you just want to show up yeah. at a million dollars and be touching. And because at a million dollars, you can still see all your customers mm -hmm. <laughs> at a hundred million dollars. You can't see all your customers anymore. Yeah. And I think you got to forego some of those, Meetings that yield immediate money for a bunch of conversations and meetings that may turn up to something. It may not, but it's such a big play. Mm -hmm. Got a, a I thought this was interesting too. I was at American Sesh and I got a chance to connect with the CEO of a major media company. And he's like, yo, let's connect. We had a good, great conversation. So he puts me in touch with his assistant and um, it was like, all right, let's, let's put something together. He's like, all right, let's put something on the calendar. Let's meet up. I'm like, all right, cool. I have, you know, a couple days this week and next week. My man sent me two dates a month and a half away. I was like, dang, right? I mean, you try to just connect. <laughs> yo, just look we'll out. move things around. In an hour. Right. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, like, what, like, what is... I be, I be taking meetings and stuff. You feel me? Which means I don't have um, enough going on towards that next level. And the question is, the question is, is that what I want? Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. The risk, the, the, the thing that it takes to really go that big... I should probably be moving around at all these different events and uh, like you see EYL like everywhere and mm -hmm. they be going to Japan and Australia and Switzerland. Ghana. They going to get it. And there's no doubt they're going to be a billion dollar company. And I got to ask myself the question, do I want to leave my kids? You were so sure that you wanted to be yeah. a billionaire at one point. And I, I've not ever been sure that I want to be a billionaire. It's just what you have to sacrifice in terms of just the general things that you love to do yeah. and like to be at, I don't know that it, I would, I would take a hundred million dollar company all day for sure. Mm -hmm. A billion though. Yeah. Whew. And I don't know, maybe we're looking at this whole thing wrong and we'd have to talk to somebody who is a billionaire. Somebody get Rihanna on the phone, please. Hold somebody on, see on, if see. we can get Rihanna. Can you get Rihanna on the phone? Uh, let me, let me, Let's let just me, see. Because if I have to think billionaire, she's the coolest billionaire walking these streets. I would want to be that kind of billionaire. She, she hit me back. Her phone is just on do not disturb. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. taking care of the babies. Um... Let's let's call let's call somebody, like a billionaire. Maybe not a billionaire, but somebody. Oh, get, get Dan on the phone. And call Dan Kathy. Let's get Dan Kathy on the phone. He's um, I think he's busy right now. <laughs> but who who would be able to have these high level conversations? People that are around these types of people. Tyler, we can get who. Huh? Myron, I don't know if I 
He ain't, he ain't gonna pick up. Myron ain't Who can we up. talk to? Who can we talk to? Somebody's like at, at least been around it and understands it on a higher level than us. A D, but he be offending our audience. He's gonna tell us to shut up and get to work. He be cussing a lot. He I'm gonna call a lot. him. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna call him. See what's see what's up with him. Uh, Cause yeah, he be he be around them them b boys. Andre Norman be around him. Andre be around him. I'm about to call. I'm gonna call Andre too if uh, AD AD don't pick up. Just gotta tell him, hey AD, you on the Social Proof podcast? Don't censor yourself, censor AD. <laughs> All right, he didn't pick up. You got you guys. What what happened to the dude, the uh, Zach? Okay, what about How's him? he doing? He moved to New York. Really? Can you call him? I can always call Zach. Okay, call Zach because he ran a twenty million dollar company. Way more than that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, let's have a conversation. I'm like, I can always call Zach. You got to get different perspectives, man. Um, even this conversation is probably giving some people a different perspective. We just, we just don't, we just see what we see. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really, really challenging. Um, are you calling him right now? No, go ahead. All right, let me call. Um, I'm going to try to get in touch with Andre. Because he, he actually runs Genius Network. No, I, doing like operations. My brother, my mother, what's the word? Man, everything's good, man. You're actually live right now on the Social Proof Podcast. Hey, Social Proof people. How do I tap in? Are we doing video? No, you're just on the audio. We can okay, hear you. I, can do, I, got, we ain't, I thought you should do Zoom, man. Well, I guess we could. All right, well, well okay, slow Did down. Did say Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> I'm what, on the pod. What's good? Mo what, good morning, brothers and sisters. Where are you at right now? I am at Genius Network headquarters in Tempe, Arizona. Good, good. All right, so you're in a perfect spot. So me and Donnie are uh, having a conversation. Uh, Tell him Donnie did not say hi. Donnie didn't say hi. <laughs> hi, Donnie. Tell him I did not say hi. She said, what's up? I did All not. Right, so okay. so <laughs> um, we are having a conversation um, because we are million dollar entrepreneurs right but there are a difference between that and the 50 million or the 100 million dollar entrepreneur and you're around that a lot and i want to know what you see so what is the question what, what are the, the differences difference? the difference is if you do a business venture and something goes bad you're done if the guy i just met with yesterday loses oh how about this my guy Crypto swung the other day or last last year. Crystal messed up. Crypto. I can account for over $100 million of friends who've lost money. Can you afford to lose $80 million, $20 million, $2 million? No. And just keep, keep moving. <laughs> These guys or ladies in this space, they have multiple ventures in multiple spaces. And if one of them goes bad, as math says it will, they are insulated and prepared for that loss. So mm. they can lose five million, ten million, and and not interfere at all in their day to day operations or life. But how do you insulate yourself? I mean, for a, 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 a starting off entrepreneur, you, that's that's where the fifty million versus one million comes in. You can't insulate yourself at one million a year. But if you're at fifty million a year, I mean, the, the well, cost of living and the rest is. Is covered, so all your investments and other stuff is heads insurances. But if you lose three million dollars today, Dave, what does that leave you? Um, in tears. <laughs> right. <laughs> if if something shifts tomorrow here, and Joe Paz is three million dollar loss, it, you it would not see a blip. His personal feelings would be hurt, but the business would not even be faced. Well, let me ask this question: In terms of what it takes to build something that big, what is the difference between somebody who builds that and somebody who builds a six figure or seven figure business in, your, in your the person? The, the, the build is your willingness to be uber focused, let people go who don't serve the overall big objective and not stay stuck. Most of the people I see that come through genius, that come through war room, that come through all the rest of these CCPs, it's never personal. It's always business. And it's like, let's get there. And there are some, you will keep this guy, that guy, but it's like, it's, they're like in the corner, like a sandbox. But um, for the most part, they have, they're clear on what they do. And they do that thing. And they partner and they take chances. They take risks. 
calculated risk, but risk nonetheless. And they just stay focused on one thing. I like and it. they like they go get the best people. Don't hire the worst people. You hire the best people to take you to another level. I've watched people spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a consultation just to learn something. That here, you people pay a hundred thousand dollars for three meetings just to get one piece of information. Mm. So you know the hundred K group is just that the hundred K group. People pay a hundred thousand dollars to come sit in a room and hear information. So the willingness to pay for additional information is a huge divide between the people who super blow and the people who do okay. I love it. I appreciate it. Yeah, go, go grab uh, Joe real quick. You know, I love him. Joe, he was here all day yesterday. <laughs> he called yesterday. You'd have had him. He's at, um, he's, he, again, he, he runs this. He's just paid for a three-day conference. He's attending. So even though he runs groups, he attends groups. He's at a three-day conference um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So he won't... I run the building, so he's out. For, but he won't be here today, tomorrow, Friday. Yeah, let me yeah. ask you this. Um, around people are like hyper successful, uh, do you find that a lot of them have family issues? Every, oh, of course. One thousand um, percent. My my original job at Genius Network for the high value, high wealth money makers was to help them with family crisis. That was my original thing that got me in the door. A lot of these folks have relatives who are drug addicted, have depression, have criminal cases pop up, have all kinds of issues. And in that space, that's the one thing they really don't have is a handle on what do you do if your niece gets on drugs? What do you do if your, if your nephew gets arrested? What do you do if your wife starts drinking too much? They're so, they're so far removed. Like in our hood, we got churches, we got nonprofits, we got centers, we got people just came home, the police, they were every day. In a super rich community, there's no nonprofit drop-in center. There's no, you know I'm saying, team challenge around the corner. There's nobody running around the street who has lots of personal lived experience that you can just tap on. So these are all, if they had it, they, they hide it. So that was my original platform is to be that person who, when someone, somebody has a crisis at this level, they call me. And I go, I just went out probably like a month ago. There's a guy who runs a $100 billion company. No, excuse me, excuse me, $22 billion. That's the number thing. 20, the guy a month ago was a $20 billion company. Runs it. He had a relative that was dealing with depression and drinking and suicidal ideation. They called me. I go down and I fix it. Let me this ask man you has that. more money than I can dream of. But yeah. he still can't save his relative. Do you, do you think it's because of that hyper focus on building wealth? I mean, people, people are people. Um, rich people have stresses like poor people. White people have stresses like black people. They're all different in their own space. But living as a human is hard. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not... Sometimes being rich makes it harder because you can't say it out loud. Sometimes mm. being poor makes it harder because you can't get access. But just waking up as a human and dealing with life, do you feel adequate? Do you feel like your worthy? Is your purpose? I mean, imagine being the son of Warren Buffett. Do you exist? <laughs> So now you have identity issues. I, I used to work with Stedman a lot, and he has a whole thing about identity leadership. He's Oprah's boyfriend. He's not Stedman. So for years, he had no identity. He had to take his identity back. He does a whole lecture on identity, identity leadership saying, I'm with the most recognizable, powerful black woman on the planet, and nobody saw me. Everybody called me Oprah's boyfriend. Nobody called me Stedman. And for years, he got lost in that, and he found his way out of that, and he wrote a book called Identity Leadership. We worked together for like three years and he routinely talked about just finding himself and not letting people dictate who he was or what he was about or his purpose. His purpose wasn't Oprah's boyfriend. I love it. Dre, I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you for tapping in, man. Anytime. All right, brother. Bye, Donnie. I did not say bye. (laughs) Are you still not talking to me or something? I am still not talking to you. You guys can handle that later after we get out of this podcast. Appreciate you, my brother. Uh, Donnie, Donnie, I always told you, if there's ever, just call me. I, I, there's no issue in my mind because you've never called me and said, great is an issue. Mm. So you can't hold me accountable for something you never brought to me. Have a genius day, Dre. Always. See you later. All right. Anyway, that's weird. Um, so yes, so, 
Um, you talk to Zach. Zach, I, I, I really like these conversations and getting insight, man. Oh, let's see if Zach is on a vineyard somewhere, booed up because this is what he spends his life doing <laughs> these days. I love perspective. Nope. It's okay. That's okay. All right. Anyway, um, we have anything else? Anybody got? Anything? Yeah, right I had a, I had a tenth one. Um, okay. Let me go to my notes. The last one that I want to finish with. Well, and the one that Dre gave really was a good one. It was yeah. it was on my list. The ability to weather a storm. Um, and I didn't say that because I don't know. Like, well, be, because we have to have the ability to even be a player in the storm yeah. in the first place, right? Uh, but that was really really good. Like. How many companies were generating seven figures and then lost it all? Mm -hmm. Just not even having good business strategy. Think about how many people we know who had multiple six and seven figure businesses throughout the pandemic because there was a, a stimulus package floating around, you know, the economy. And now that their buyers aren't stimulated in that way financially, they are struggling to to do business. That's just that's why I stay so focused on just doing classic business, traditional business. Like sure, trends and things are great, but just do classic business. Business the way business was being done in year two thousand, mm -hmm. the way it was being done in year nineteen eighty. You know, obviously innovating over time, but it's so dangerous to just be a part of. Oh, let me sell this particular product and bet it all on that. And then you, you don't know how to weather the storm. Yeah. I want everybody to watch this uh, series called uh, The Men Who Built America. Y'all saw that? The Men Who Built America? <sighs> Entrepreneurship was so much different back then mm. because they were fighting to build an industry, not to sell a product. Not to sell a product. I'm talking about it's the Vanderbilts versus J.P. Morgan. Or like it's Tom, not Tom Ford, Henry <laughs> Ford, uh, Henry Ford, who's building a new way of transportation. And it's another company that's looking to crisscross the United States with railroads. And it was the beef was not um, not you're my competitor, but I want to be the top industry in the world. That was the fight. It's like they just saw the joint so big. J.B. Morgan, I want to own. I need every dollar in the world coming through my bank. Mm -hmm. This is the fight. And they just saw it so big. I rem and I need to go back and watch it because I, I remember watching it in my one-bedroom apartment. And maybe that's how I got out of my one-bedroom apartment because I was so charged up because the vision got so much bigger. It wasn't about a $20 T-shirt or selling a product. It was about... How can I create an industry? I'm gonna go back and watch it. The Men Who Built America. It's um, I don't know where it would be at. Maybe Amazon or something like that. But it was incredible. We're gonna watch. Matter of fact, let's watch, watch it. That, we, yeah. that can be our our thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, right. number ten. The one that I want to leave with is, uh, one million dollar companies do everything independently and from scratch, mm -hmm. whereas one hundred million dollar companies participate in mergers and acquisitions. Yeah, stop yelling at me. Mm -hmm. Watch your mouth. Watch Discussing. your mouth. We got to do everything <laughs> from scratch. It has to be our mm -hmm. way. We got to think about it. This is my baby. This is my idea. Versus when you start getting around to $100 million companies, they're like, hmm, they already do that well. Let's nope. go and offer them a buyout. Let's go and acquire that company, bring on all their already developed team with their developed processes and systems. We have more ability to have a larger reach. Let's go either merge with them or acquire them. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. We have to. And you also not only have to be willing to be the person who buys and acquires, sometimes to hit $100 million status, you got to be. Uh, willing to be acquired. <laughs> yeah, oh, 100%. Uh, I want to say, like, this is my, my, my mogul. Mo I'm in mogul mode this year. Mm -hmm. And I actually got two. One, the deal is pretty much done. We, um, we're following a new company and this new, this company, they're, they're already doing something great, but we're creating a new brand and we're going on a campaign and stuff like that. And I just uh, bought into the business 
but I'm starting to see it as something that can really, really scale. And it's not going to have my name on it. The only way you would know, you would probably, if you knew me, you would think like, all right, then that's the company because he's promoting that joint heavy. But uh, it's not like me on a website. I, and I told the people that I'm partnering with, we're not making it about you or your partner. We are making it about this product, this service. People are going to love it. It's going to stand on its own, and we're going to sell this for $100 million. We're going to start scale. We're going to, like, we are really going to scale this thing. So um, that deal is is, is done because we already got the operating agreement and signed a company and stuff like that. We're just trademarking a new name. But, yeah, we're in mogul mode now, man, because I just – I don't, I don't want my hands on it. I want to be, I can scale my skills and my skill is exposure and vision. So I want to be able to, I can give exposure and vision to anybody. So if I can start partnering with different projects and give them the same thing, um, we'll be at a hundred million dollars. Yes. Anyway. All right. Uh, are we done here? Yes, we are done here. I was looking at the comments to see if there were any questions. Um, If you are watching this from home right now, that means that you are watching a fully released episode with the rest of the world. But if you were a part of Actionable CEO with me, Donnie Wiggins, or the morning meetup with David Shands, you could be live with us in the studio audience right, right now, now. Right now. Or you could be live streaming and getting your questions answered and having feedback coming through. That's what I'm looking at when you see me turn my head. I'm making sure that our CEOs are doing well over there on the screen. And y'all, it's so easy to do it. Yep. You can literally go to the morningmeetup.com, the morningmeetup.com, join Dave and his community of entrepreneurs that get together every single day of the week to talk entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. the morningmeetup.com or or, or uh-oh. You've got options. You got options. You got options. Am I doing this or are you doing this? Listen. <laughs> I want to invite you to a community that is gonna force you to take action. Mm. And if you want to be the CEO that you see in your head and you wanna be the action taker that you see in your head, it's gonna be a couple of things you need, okay? You ready? You need a coach, you need a communi- community, and you need comrades, comrades, okay? You need a coach that knows what they're doing, okay? That can advise you, but you also need a community that can support You taking the action that your coach is giving you, but you also need sideline comrades that you can build with. And that is absolutely what Actionable CEO provides and offers. Okay, so you can go to Actionable CEO. You're an entrepreneur. ActionableCEO.com. You are an entrepreneur that wants to win, that needs to win, that is going to win in 2024. Uh, Now is the time. Okay, so how was that? That was really good. I actually gave you the pitch that I gave my company. You need it, comrades, community, and coaching. Did I was, you write it down? I'm about to. <laughs> For sure. I actually to. came up with it this morning. I was like, ooh, that's good. That's good. Comrades, community, and coaching. Yep. Write that down. Go ahead and trademark that. Let's put the application <laughs> in. <laughs> All right, Look you guys. Y'all, we love y'all. We out. Bye. Peace. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more.